Well, here we are. It's Friday, uh, May 6, 2022, and this is the weekly video. We do these every Friday, as you, most of you know. Take a look and see how things went in the uh, Chinese art and auction market in the last week. Uh, what, what was happening on, uh, on on the global auction pages, what happened over at eBay. We did a video uh, yesterday. Many of you have seen it. I hope you take the time to look at it. It was a review of the uh, Hong Kong results uh, for Sotheby's that, uh, from their series of sales that they did last week. And uh, it was an up and down week. And then we, we talk a little bit about how the economy might be affecting things and um, what sold, what, what didn't sell, what's some of the surprises and so forth. It's pretty interesting, uh, but, all, you know, it's all part of the market, and we, we just go with it, take a look and think about what's happening, and adjust accordingly, as they say. All right, now a couple of things. Um, I, I mentioned last week that for the, for the global auction page users, uh, it's becoming an increasingly bigger part of this because it seems that eBay is I, it seems to be losing sellers. Um, um, I, I've been watching it and keeping track, and uh, I've gotten emails from people saying, you know, there's there's less and less stuff on eBay, and I think a lot of it is because of the the, the way the company is run and some of the changes they've made and how they manage your money, um, uh, which uh, when you when you when you sell something on there, the managed payments thing and the problems associated with it and all kinds of other stuff. But at any rate. And the, and the flood of fakes that are on there, of course, is always a problem. So one of the things I mentioned last week about the global pages was that the uh, uh, live auctioneers page was getting so full with things overseas and things in the U.S. that we've split them. All right. So now there are two pages for live auctioneers. One is live auctioneers USA and live auctioneers outside the USA, just to keep it simple. And um, here's the uh, USA page. And if you scroll down it, you're going to find an enormous amount of stuff on here. This is one of the things that's happening is that the eBay listings seem to be diminishing and the, and the, and the listings on the uh, for the other auction houses, the live auction here seems to be increasing. And uh, this is just a, a smattering of some of the stuff that's on there right now. This isn't anybody means all of it, but there, there just seems to be an awful lot of stuff on here. And there's even more, um, if that's possible, over in the EU and you know, with some of the Canadian auction houses. And uh, there are, I don't know, there's probably two or three hundred times more items on here than you're currently going to find on eBay. At least that. Uh, it's crazy. And there's some really good sales coming up all over the place uh, in the United States and Europe and in Canada. So uh, keep an eye on that uh, if you use the global pages. And we also put an extra video on the, on the global member uh, homepage this week too about an auction that's coming up over in um, uh, 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 Scotland uh, with, with some amazing things. That, and, and if you use the pages, you should watch the video and see what uh, uh, what, what that's about. We'll, we'll, at some point when, when the sale is you know, getting closer or something, we'll talk about it a bit more about that, that vase that they've got, which is just phenomenal. Uh, just unbelievable vase. Wow. And it was it belonged to some uh, uh, a doctor over there, and uh, he had bought it as a decoration for his kitchen. And uh, it turned out it's uh, <laughs> one of the great rarities. So there you go. All righty. Uh, let's see what's happening now. Um, oh, oh, the thing I want to talk about was that uh, uh, Doyle's had their sale this week. And I, I know a number of you bought things there because I've gotten emails um, you, you, uh, from, from some of you who have bought not only at Doyle's but bought at the Freeman sale. Both those sales took place this week. They both had very interesting things. And uh, as always, they did a good job presenting it and so forth. And there were a couple of lots that passed. There were a couple, uh, most of the lots sold, and there were some really wonderful buys. And I'm going to go through them. And this is this is why I, I always say, leave a bid. And I'm going to show you a, a couple of people that got some got some good buys just by leaving a bid. Just They just left a bid that wasn't crazy, and they got it. And this is one of them. Um, somebody bought this lot, and I, I heard from him, um, for $500. Um, he, he wanted to know what I thought of it, and I thought, well, you got a really great buy. Uh, the vase in the middle, I'll give you an idea, is an 18th century vase. It's 20 inches tall. It's a big vase, okay? And then it had two Chinese export cider jugs, one with a lid, one without the lid. But uh, this is a really fine cider jug really really fine one and he bought all three pieces for 500 bucks with a, against a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar estimate which i thought was very reasonable 
um, the vase in the middle is, uh, is, is, is worth the estimate, um, the high estimate for this whole lot. So bravo on, 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 on him. And this is, this is this, this is the strategy when you, when you, when you're looking at a lot of stuff like we put on the global pages, go through it and register and hit them with bids, hit everything with bids. Reason you don't have to put the moon on him. You don't have to even here. He didn't even put half the low estimate. He got the lot. And that's the way you buy. That's how you, you, uh, uh, Albert Sack, the American furniture dealer, once said to me, you make your profit when you buy. And he's right. All right. And then back over, this was that, that wonderful uh, um, uh, uh, Kang Shia Mari dish that uh, was uh, a charger, actually 16 inches. This was a beast of a plate, beautifully done. This was also at Doyle's. I thought this was a wonderful dish. And the gilding was all in wonderful condition, beautifully intact. And uh, I think $1,600 for it was a perfectly reasonable buy. I thought the estimate was very low, as I said, when we previewed the sale. <clears throat> and I expected it to go through it. It did. But, but, but what a handsome, um, very fine example that was. A good buy. And uh, then this, the uh, Armorial Export Terrain. And this is the one that's sort of a, a high-domed affair, a big one. But in really fine condition with overglazed blue enamel, circa 1800 just a, a very fine terrine um, um, with the, uh, the, 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 what is it, the, the Biden, uh, it's a, I think it's a, what is it, a Scottish, Scottish um, armorial uh, terrine, $475. That's the way to buy them. Uh, these were good buys. And then this, the pair of uh, wall vases, uh, these are uh, uh, late 18th, early 19th century uh, export type wall vases, wall pockets. They're, they're thin like this, and they have the holes on the back to be hung on a wall. And they were sold ori originally by Linda Willauer, who's a, one of the, one of the, she was many years one of the best uh, antique dealers in the United States. And they have the, uh, the chicken skin, uh, what they call this chicken skin ground, nice uh, overglaze uh, blue enamels, beautiful grisaille, and in good shape. The enamels were in beautiful condition, and somebody picked these up for $650. Now, again, this was a good thing to buy. And uh, then these, the pair of bowls that were um, um, uh, part of the, uh, they were bought at uh, Christie's Amsterdam um, by uh, Marchant. And um, um, uh, was it Marchant or um, um, a Chait Gallery? Ralph Chait Gallery uh, sold these in New York. They were about four inches, four and a half, five inches in diameter for the pair of them. Uh, they, they came from the Hatcher collection. Uh, somebody picked them both up for $450. Again, somebody probably just, you know, they just left a couple of bids. He left $450 bid on it, uh, 50 bucks over the opening bid, and he got them. All right, and then on to this. Very nice. It was sold in the mid-range of the estimate, but these were really nice Chinese uh, export uh, gouaches on pith um, uh, that were in the sale. But beautifully, uh, beautifully done. Beautifully, beautifully done. Um, uh, sort of re reminiscent of the work of, of, of Fuqua um, and that kind of thing. But uh, may have may have been from his studio. But prof prof just profusely done. These clus these very abundant flowers and all the vines and so forth. And every one of them was a good one. This was one has insects on it, insects and more flowers and so forth. And uh, somebody picked up the whole lot of eight for seven hundred and fifty dollars. There you go for eight of these paintings. So it's le less than a hundred dollars a piece. Good buy. And this was also, I think, a very good buy at Doyle's. Uh, for those of you that uh, are interested in Chinese export, uh, it was estimated at fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars, which I thought was reasonable. And this is a, a tea tea making, a tea process on on uh, paper, probably English imported paper. And it's a it's a really interesting painting. Uh, I think it was a great value. Uh, here you have a foreigner um, doing business with the uh, manager or owner of the uh, tea company, and you have people over here on the left putting the tea in the boxes. You have the accountants, the people over here that you know write down the transactions, and then in the background you have all the people that are are mashing the tea, getting it ready, uh, uh, you know, uh, preparing it with their feet like grapes. And then in the middle, they are weighing. They're weighing the tea bins. Here they are. And there's a bin on the scale, and they're weighing it. And while well, they're being supervised, just an interesting scene. Nicely framed, beautifully framed. Actually, it's probably a four or five hundred dollar frame. Somebody bought this for a thousand dollars. Couldn't be happier for you. That so that was a very nice purchase. 
And somebody also bought this for $1,000. And this was a fantastic buy. I don't know where the reverse paintings on glass buyers are, but uh, th these were very nice. And these were pretty good sized reverses on glass. They, uh, the images are 16 by 22 inches each. These weren't small, but very nice uh, 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 mid-19th century Chinese export reverse paintings in these beautiful flame frames. And there was a note on the back of it, on the backboard, saying that the frames had been cleaned up and maybe regilded back in the 1980s. But whoever did it did a superb job. They, have the, they had their original backboards on them, and, and the glass looked to be in great condition. Um, and, uh, you know, $500 a piece, somebody got them. Uh, and abs make a room. These are absolutely elegant and wonderful. And uh, I remember a number of years ago, uh, I was at an auction in southern New Hampshire that did a uh, Northeast auctions. They did China trade sales every year. And it seems to me, I saw two of these go through there. And at the time, I think they brought about $6,000. So uh, th this was a fantastic buy for somebody who's interested in China trade reverse glass. Because the Chinese didn't paint reverse glass paintings for themselves. This wasn't something that they did as a traditional art. All of the glass was imported the way the English imported uh, 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 paper. Um, English paper to, for them to paint on, to paint those beautiful gouaches on. They also brought in the glass and um, asked that they reverse paint them on glass, which the Chinese were very proficient at. And uh, you end up with a result like this. Now, this is something that passed. And I'm only mentioning this is if you like Chinese uh, watercolors and gouaches, uh, Doyle, um, um, you know, is, is generally pretty open to uh, anything that doesn't sell. Get in touch with them and um, see if you can't make an offer. The, the starting bid on this was just $400, $800 to $1,200 estimate, which is reasonable. This is a really nice uh, 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 gouache on paper, not pith, on paper. And uh, it was done uh, probably between 1790 and 1810. But very fine quality, very precisely drawn. Look at a tiny, tiny little feet, the bound feet, and seated on this uh, rather rustic bamboo stool in this very cool looking um, table um, here uh, uh, with the, this, the, these, uh, you know, all these angled tables with all the plant for display and so forth. And I'm not sure what she's doing. It looks like she's painting something. But at any rate, it's a beautiful picture. It has a very nice feeling to it. And, um, you know, get in touch with them. Call Doyle's up and ask them about it. It's, uh, what lot is this? Lot 71. Um, you know, it had an eight to $1,200 estimate. It passed with an opening bid of 400. You might be able to buy it for, for, I don't know what the reserve was. The reserve might have been, you know, seven or 800. But, you know, post-sale, you know, if, if, this, if the consigner had other things in the sale and did pretty well, he probably doesn't want it back. Or if it's coming out of an estate that's being settled, they're going to need to settle it, and they're not going to want to wait to put it through another auction. And they may very well accept an offer. So make an offer. Call up, call them up um, um, and say, I'm interested in that painting. What would, you know, what would you take, you know, you know start them up. Would you take 350 400 bucks for it and see what they say? They may take it. Um, uh, you never know. So it's worth it. They're nice people. All right. And uh, call Rick over there and talk to him. All right. And now this was the Freeman sale right here um, that finished up. This was the, They had a lot of Chinese export. And I thought this was very interesting because they created these huge lots. And ev evidently they, they, they wanted to get them out of the way. And a lot of this, this is the kind of portion that was very so popular with the American furniture collectors for years. And they have these big services they built up. And I think these, these, whenever you see big lots, always think opportunity, all right? And we're going to go through some of them, and this is why, all right? This is a very interesting lot. It's only three pieces. But what you have is you have a two-color uh, uh, Fitzhugh plate over here, green and, and orange. And then you have a sepia and orange Fitzhugh plate here. Two very, those are rare color combinations. And then you have this beautiful late 18th century, early early 19th century possibly, pistol urn. Um, this big classical uh, pistol handled uh, Chinese urn. Beautifully done, also in orange with the uh, faux marbleized base on it and all that. Uh, the, the urn is worth about what the lot sold for, put it that way, um, or actually a little bit more. These urns, you know, if you go to New York or any place, any, any city where they have these, you know, the urns are going to be two to $3,000 for the urn, and these plates sell for around 500 to $700 a piece. So whoever bought this lot did just fine. And if they're a dealer, 
they'll, they'll make money with them. And if you're a collector, you got yourself a good buy. And the same thing goes true with this um, Chinese export um, uh, service that I heard from the, the fellow that bought this. He wanted to know, you know, what would be the, a good way to handle it. And I went over it with him and, and one of the ID, identification assistant replies. Uh, but it's a beautiful set, beautiful stuff. A few of the pieces are Samson, the mugs and that sort of thing. But the plates, the terrine and all the rest of it are all trying to trade the pair of terrines. The little, the little uh, uh, twin-handled uh, uh, pieces here, all that is Chinese. And somebody bought this whole lot um, for uh, about the price, about the value of this, of this, of the terrine. All right, look at this terrine, this fabulous terrine in the middle here, Chinlung period, um, pseudo tobacco leaf pattern um, with the with the uh, the buds on there. It's pretty pretty much pseudo tobacco leaf, but really nice and. Uh, bought the whole shebang for twenty six hundred dollars with a three to five thousand dollar estimate, which I thought was very reasonable. So uh, bravo! And uh, and then and then this the massive Fitzhugh uh, Orange Fitzhugh service, uh, all circa eighteen hundred. Um, you've got an enormous center platter, and these are dinner plates up here and here. So you get an idea how big this platter is. Then you have a square platter, a rectangular platter, a square platter. Got a bunch of plates, little cups and saucers, gravy boats, vegetable terrines, all of these pieces. Uh, really nice lot. Really nice lot. $2,200. Again, lots are, uh, if you're a dealer or you want to be a dealer, um, always seek out lots uh, because lots generally have a pretty easy profit built into them most of the time unless there's an incredibly rare sleeper in there and then it's going to take off but but if if the if the auctioneer has been careful and built a significant size lot of interesting items you can buy them and uh you can you know take out the pieces you want to keep for yourself and sell the rest and uh, very often you end up making a profit and getting something for free out of the lot with a little extra work all right and then over to this this was the the, the last one was this uh, very handsome blue Fitzhugh porcelain dinnerwares all around circa 1800. But in this lot were some good items. Um, you have this very fine, very large platter. Um, you've got this beautiful terrine. This, this platter may go with that terrine. They look, they look like they're kissing cousins, which is a wonderful thing. And this is a, a pretty rare bird right here. This is a reticulated fish plate um, with the holes in it. And, this, and it goes, uh, you know, the liner fits in there. And you have uh, one, two, three hot water plates and two very fine small terrines with their under trays, a gravy boat, cups and saucers, and a leaf form dish. All of it for $1,300. All of it. Um, that was a, that's a, 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 also was, was a really good thing to buy if you're a dealer because you, you, you cannot lose money with this kind of thing if you're buying and selling. And if you're looking to get some really good Fitzhugh, these were all the best of the best of the Fitzhugh. So um, either way, you got you, you you came out ahead no matter what whoever, whoever bought it, whatever they were planning on. They, they, there's no downside here at all, and that's what you, as a dealer you want to avoid downside. All right, you 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 want to always make sure that when you you write the check to buy something, you you're safe with a profit, and you're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, uh, you know, in the coming weeks, how you're going to get out of this lot and make a living off of it. So there you go. All right, now let's take a, uh, um, a look at uh, the eBay pages, what happened over there last week. There were, there were quite a few things on there, and, and the things did pretty well. As you, we put three videos in there last week, got a little crowded because we, we, did, we did some extras. It was, we had a lot going on. It was fun. Um, uh, we could take a look here and see how things went. There were some pretty good prices, uh, but less material than we're used to seeing. Uh, one of the plates that sold last week was this, a very nice mid-19th century, uh, 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 you know, t twin twin peacock, um, uh, f uh, Famille Rose plate with uh, a lot of green in it. I thought the green was very appealing. And then these three big um, uh, chrysanthemums floating around, these rocky outcroppings, a good looking plate. Nicely finished back, pretty neat and tidy, good quality, and uh, went for a, a decent price, $256. Um, not an overpayment, not an underpayment, right sort of smack in the middle of what it was worth, I think. And then over to this. Um, um, I like, uh, this is a new term I've never heard before. They called this the seller, the seller, UK cooler. He called this Chinese castle bone brush pot. 
I don't know what castle bone is, but this is ivory, uh, which is fine. Um, it's old ivory. Uh, it was carved a long time ago, mid 19th century or before, but beautifully done, beautifully, beautifully done piece of ivory. And uh, as, as is the case with a lot of these, you'll notice there's, um, here's the top and there's the bottom. There's, there's, there's no bottom. These, these, when they carved these things, um, here's, here's the top. It's where it's thicker and then thinner at the bottom. When they carve these things, they would they would they would carve the trunk, which they hollowed out, and then they would add uh, very often an ivory uh, uh, disc in the bottom as the base, and this would be like a pen holder or a little brush pot, and uh, they often fall out because the ivory expands and contracts so much, especially in a western house with central heat and humidity changes, climate changes, and all that, and the ivory opens and closes, opens and closes, and eventually the bottom plate just the, the, the expansion at some point will break the glue that hold, they, they use to hold these in place and it will cause the ivory to fall out and uh, the little plate in the bottom. So this was like a tube more than a brush pot, but it, 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 a lot of them come out that way. Uh, somebody said, isn't that bad? I said, not really, because you're buying it for the artwork. And this was nice because it had pen work as well as carving. Um, you see all this these these little, uh, little uh, there's a better picture of it. There we go. All this drawing that they did, all this pen work, pen and ink work they did, they incise it and then ink it. And then you have these beautiful, beautiful, much deeper carving within a cartouche. This is really nice carving. This is uh, Cantonese, uh, probably from about 18, 1830 to 1850, but really good work. And somebody picked this up for $325. And I suspect the price might have been a little bit soft because there were, there were some... Uh, if you if you live in certain places, you may not want to risk shipping this across borders because technically you're supposed to do it with a CITES permit and all this other stuff. And uh, there's, it seems like they they are. I've, I've noticed more ivory turning up in the U.S. market now. More ivories have been turning up in the EU and England regularly now. So it seems like maybe the uh, uh, um, the pressure. Um, on on the uh, illegal market has become more accurately targeted away from the antiques and onto the poachers because there's 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 no argument that I've heard yet that uh, indicates that the contemporary ivory market is bolstered in any way by the antique ivory market. The two are are, are completely different, and um, it, it seems like uh, maybe a little common sense is coming back and these great pieces of art. Um, can be uh, sold again, and um, we'll see. We'll see. But um, they have, nobody has said anything formally yet, so I, I wouldn't stick my neck out too far. But uh, it seems like there's a lessening of the uh, pressure on it. And eBay um, obviously um, doesn't really care. They they give lip service to caring about ivory on their site, but they, they don't really, uh, um, unless it's thrown right in their face, they won't do anything about it. Because there's, there's, you know, they worry about fake Hermes, but that's about it. And then on here to that lovely plate that sold. Uh, this was a, a, a great plate, and um, I heard from the guy that bought it. Again, I've heard from him a couple of times. He's very, very pleased. It's a wonderful plate. Uh, this sold. When did this sell? This closed um, the last, uh, uh, what was the date on this? I'm going to check it the 30th so it was about a week ago and I don't know if I mentioned this last week or not we've talked about it before, a couple weeks ago when it came up for sale it sold for fifteen hundred dollars and the guy is thrilled to death that he got it all right and then on to these now this is a, sort of a strange thing these vases were sold two or three weeks ago and somebody didn't pay for them and they brought uh, thirty two hundred thirty five hundred dollars somewhere in there and uh, the poor guy that owned them had to put them up again. These were nice export bases. I have no idea why somebody that buys export would buy these and not pay for them. Just doesn't make any sense at all. This was these were good good objects. Um, he put them up. They sold again for thirty two hundred and seventy eight dollars. So pretty close to whatever they sold before. I, remember, I don't remember what the exact number was, but it was right within a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars either way, high or low of that price. They resold again and did just fine. They closed on the first. And uh, th th these were these were nice. They're just about a foot tall, but beautifully done. Beautifully done with all that raised um, um, of porcelain work with the vines on the top, and it looked quite intact. It looked quite intact. He overlit it a little bit when he when he took the pictures, so it looks a little bit washed out. But very nice items. 
you know, try not to use flashes when you shoot your objects. And then over to this. Um, this was one of the great buys of the week. Um, and uh, uh, some of you recognized it because I've heard from you. Um, but this was mislabeled as Chinese. And th what this actually is, is a, uh, a very unusual, and these are pretty rare, Joseon period Korean underglazed red vase. And it was either made in uh, the late 18th or 19th century. Uh, they're, they're very hard to date and nail down. But this was a terrific little jar. Um, uh, and uh, I know some of you looked at it and were perplexed. I got an email from one, one, one inquiry about it because he was, it was after the sale, unfortunately, but he was perplexed about why it was Chinese. And he thought it might have been Japanese. It's not. This is Korean. And Korean porcelain with underglazed red is very rare. Um, um, especially in this form with this bamboo tree on it, it's really, really rustically drawn. With a, there's a, a couple of, you see the birds up here. There's two birds on the upper branches and these bamboo trees, and the red sort of bleeds around a bit. But it's it's sort of like an impressionist painting. It's really wonderful, and this very nice crackle in the glaze. And somebody bought this for only five hundred and sixteen dollars. All right, and uh, those of you who follow Korean know that there probably should have been. A zero times two on the back end of that number. So uh, if, if you bought this and you haven't paid for it yet, pay for it, all right, because it's a very good thing. Um, uh, this is a wonderful thing, and I, I don't expect to see that come back up for sale again for non-payment, because it, it was, it was these bring, um, in this quality and with that brightness of color, it would bring eight to $12,000. This is a very good buy. And, uh, and then on to this, this was a, a good buy for somebody that wants a, a nice 18th century um, uh, uh, export plate in blue and white with good decoration all the way around, 100 bucks. There you go. So somebody uh, left a few bids on it. Um, I, I don't know where the bidding started. Where do they begin the bidding on this? Did we get it to open up? Let's see. Started at 99 cents. There you go. And it went right up. That, that sh and there was no reserve on this. That that shows you the that it doesn't matter what you start something at. It's going to find its price one way or the other. So it went from he put this up for ninety nine cents, let it go, ended up going for a hundred. That's about what it's worth in today's market. And then on to this. Now there were two of these um, puzzle. These are called puzzle pots or categories. And there were two of these this week on here. There was this one which is a, 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 a sort of a uh, let's take a look at it. A late nineteenth century one right here. All right. With figures on the outside, late Ching, very late Ching, and uh, what did it bring? About three hundred twenty dollars. But the there's another one. This was sort of interesting. It shows you this gives you an idea of the range that this form can bring. Um, uh, I think it's this one. Uh, this uh, was in Celadon with underglazed blue and underglazed red up here on the top. Very desirable type right here. Here's the bottom of it, um, and so forth. Here it is, very, very desirable. Uh, there was one, I think, at Bonhams recently, too. Um, it, this went for $1,326. So it was worth roughly four times more, um, 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 approximately. And it was because of the color combinations. The power of the color combinations <clears throat> are everything. <clears throat> and this was a pretty nice one. I think the one in, at, at Bonhams or Christie's brought about the same money. And uh, But very nice form, very desirable in this color palette. Remember it because you will find them sometimes in antique shops or at auctions and they treat the blue and white one like that the same as this as far as prices and estimates goes. This is by far superior, by far superior, um, even though it, it doesn't have as much activity on it. Uh, it is the one the market wants. So keep that in mind when you're out there shopping around. And then on to this, the transitional period uh, uh, pot with the scholars on it. We talked about it last week. I thought it was a nice one. The bottom of it looked good. Uh, the uh, decoration all the way around looked nice. Uh, circa 1650 and uh, plus or minus a few years. There it is. Very nicely done. And uh, how tall was it? It wasn't, that, it wasn't enormous. What was it? Eight inches tall. Nice size, though. Ended up selling for $2,041. But a good example, and it wasn't damaged and banged up. It's amazing how many transitional uh, porcelains, like in this form, um, just were banged around so much over a couple of hundred years. They seem to be more victim, more likely to be the victim of, of, of 
misuse than, than any porcelain from that period I could think of. I don't know why. I think it's because nobody paid much attention to transitional wares for a long, 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 long time. And they were just considered to be, you know, not particularly interesting and not valuable and provincial. And, uh, of course, that all changed in the last 50, 60 years. But back in the day, they got knocked about. And then over here to, to this, this is that uh, shell form Chinese export dish. It was Kangxi period. Uh, this, this was a nice one. And it had that very classic unglazed uh, uh, lined back that you see. You see these on these fairly often. It's how they finish them. But the, the design and the pattern palette and the color palette rather is all very good. Um, there's just a tiny loss of uh, glaze here. It doesn't The porcelain's not chipped, just the glaze got knocked off and fritted off in the same on the other corner. So that may have happened during the firing for the most part. Ended up selling for $373, which is perfectly reasonable for a good colored example like this. These are nice. All right, and then what's coming up? There's a few things coming along this week. We haven't, I haven't put it all together yet. We're still working out, so check the the newsletter page when we when we finish it over on bit amount um, there's this really nice looking hexagonal nine and a half inch tall uh, mandarin vase first half of the 19th century and uh, there is get the page load this slip decorated uh, vase with bats on it and uh, it's rather unusual form it's a maping form has a kangxi mark on it which it, which it isn't of course we all know it's a, a late ching and uh, at first i wasn't sure about it and then i saw the foot rim and saw that very nice little yellowing spot and the slight bit of glossiness on the edge of the foot rim and all of that. And uh, the uh, this decoration in here, the way the slip is applied, um, it, 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 it's fine. And it's all, it's got eight days to go. This is a fairly new listing. It'll be on the global on the uh, regular newsletter page, not the global pages. And um, it should bring four or five hundred dollars pretty easily, but. Anything under that is a good buy. <laughs> and uh, lastly, is uh, this this is going up, um, and I wanted to mention it because they haven't listed as Kangxi Amari serving platter. I don't think it is. Um, I think it's I think it's probably uh, more likely Chinlung. Um, they're just off, but they, I don't think they're being duplicitous about it. I think they're just mistaken um, with this flat unglazed back done in this manner. The color palette is is like Kangxi Amari. It's the the blue, gold, and red. But the, uh, the decoration, the border decoration, the shape of the plate, the flat bottom, and all that um, make me think that it's a uh, Chinlung period. But, but a handsome plate. I'm not knocking it. It's a really pretty, very strong decoration. Very, very strong decoration. It's up to $148. Ought to bring, um, um, how big is this thing? 12 inches, 12 inches uh, wide. It ought to bring there uh, in today's world. So there we are. All righty. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Where we're going to be doing a review of the uh, Skinner rug auction, the Jim Dixon collection that took place. Uh, finished up the the online version of it. Finished last night. Um, uh, with interesting results, uh, very strong sales, a lot of interest in these old textiles, and the prices were reflective of that. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know why Skinner split it into uh, an online sale versus an all, uh, and then had a separate live sale for part of it and an online sale, because the online stuff was quite good and brought significant amounts of money. Not sure why they did it that way, but they did. Uh, but who knows? Anyway. There we are. Okay, and uh, have a good weekend. Subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. And, uh, 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 you know, if you want, consider joining the uh, global pages. Uh, join the forum uh, um, and so forth. All good. All supports the site and what we're doing. And uh, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you all next week. Okay. And, uh, and, the, and uh, the newsletter page, the global pages will be all fully updated. The newsletter page will be updated today, and the global page will be fully updated tomorrow morning, first thing. All right, we just did it yesterday, so it's, it's in good shape. All righty, thanks for watching, and uh, see you all later. Bye-bye.